What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Ladies, Lanes, Likes, and Likes. Ow! Shit! Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell goes a long way for me, and this video goes a long way for you. That way you become a present of our great content that's going live here at a little neck of the YouTube. What's hit my elbow so hard on that countertop? My regular camera isn't working, so we're just using the input thing, and then I don't have the room to go like this and do the man of whatever. It's about what it felt like to watch two ground inning double plays with the bases loaded for the New York Yankees today. 3-1 bottom eight there. Not looking good for the lock on the over of seven and a half there. Got the Gilbert two earned runs in the first inning. Saw 90 and a half there. It moved to for that uh, live line. Didn't try to middle it. Could have tried to middle it. Didn't try to middle it. Oopsie. Just frustrating to have baseball. Framber Valdez can't get swing and miss here to finish off batters here. K laddered him up. He's got two strikeouts through four innings. He's only at 56 pitches, so maybe some hope that he can at least get us to six. Six would be good. That's all I really have to complain about. We have 15 games, obviously a much better looking slate here today. Didn't have a ton on the card. Didn't have a ton that showed up later in Monday. And Well, Tuesday with 15 games, we're going to have that. We're also going to have an NBA. We're going to have Eastern Conference Finals action, uh, Pacers, Celtics. So check out NBA Lindy's covering that. And then, of course, my Timberwolves, they're through to the Western Conference Finals. I'll be covering that one, Game 1, on Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. But either way, MLB, just a lackluster, ridiculous little day. Obviously, not much to mine out of the value there. Had a lot of people in the comments saying that they didn't like that slate either. So glad to be on board with it. Hey, Atlanta's second game, minus one and a half, got that one through after the under got obliterated. Because apparently, Dylan Cease can't pitch. And Jimenez, one of the better closers, or not closers, he's like a setup guy from Detroit back in the day. He gave up infinity earned runs to the Padres, and they lost 6-5 in the game one. But you don't care about that. You care about Tuesday. So let's get to it. Producer Jacob, hello. Hi. We'll talk about MGM Odd Chopper later. Let's get to the picks. Our first game begins here with the Mets, the Guardians, and uh, Mr. Hauser, Adrian Hauser, Mr. Carlos Carrasco. Oh, boy. I think you know by now that they're not my favorite backs in any way, shape, or form. We're looking at some interesting wind kind of through... I mean, it's kind of like everywhere. We'll get to Wrigley Field, that's for sure. It exists in Kansas City, like eight, mid-80s, blown out. That's kind of what you have here in Cleveland. It's going to be mid-80s at first pitch, low 80s. Wind blowing out. Yeah, nine for a total here, but also because these pitchers are not very good. Hauser now pitching for the Mets, not uh, with the Brewer, Brew Crew anymore. 10.8% K rate, 14.6% walk rate. You see that, you know, immediately there are problems. 115 batted ball events. Somebody who's got to eat innings here for the Mets now that they've sold off everybody. Carlos Carrasco, 353 X Woba, not good. 271 expected batting average, also not good. 7% barrel percentage. We can kind of get down with our bad selves with that a little bit. It's the only reason I'm not going out of my way to pick on him too much here. I'm leaning towards the over of nine here purely because of weather. We have more weather coming up later where I think props might be more advantageous. But I'll at least throw out Jose Ramirez here. I don't think we're going to get the number that I'm looking for here. These are not the numbers you're looking for. But similar to Ellie De La Cruz, who I think we talk about mm, in two games. Uh, look at that. It's like I know that it's on my sheet. A little bit of lefty power here. I know he's a switch hitter, but kind of like for the left side. And I think against Mr. Adrian Hauser, maybe we get something plus 320 or better. Plus 330, kind of the number that I was expecting here in this spot when it opened. Uh, it is not open yet. That is unfortunate, but... We'll see here. Give me something better than the plus 320 number. It will be on the card. Producer Jacob thinks that I'm now a Milwaukee Brewers fan, which is one, not accurate. Two, they're going into extra, so maybe I get a backdoor cover on this Milwaukee over an uh, eight and a half plus the Milwaukee money line. 2-2 two, two, heading to the top of the 10th there. Had Joe Ross leave early, so it became a Milwaukee bullpen session, which is frustrating. A little bit frustrating, but I will say it makes me think that Gasser will be putting his foot on the gas a little bit here. There's nothing funny to mine out of that. I apologize. Uh, Southpaw, dude, that uh, overall pretty decent stuff so far. Two starts, 1.77 expected ERA. He's going to be in Miami, decent pitchers park. We'll say that it's not advantageous to necessarily look at this total. It's about perfectly efficient at eight. You know how I feel about key numbers of eight for overs. Usually a good thing. But this is like smack dab, like 7.8. And it's not looking very good for us whatsoever. So I will back the Brew Crew here because Trevor Rogers, despite what we just saw his best outing last time against Detroit, saw the six strikeouts, saw all of that. The numbers across the board are still not inspiring. 45.8% hard hit, 289 expected batting average. Give me Milwaukee here at minus 130, minus 135. Happy to be firing anything up to minus 143. 
Said I would talk about him. Here we go. San Diego coming off of uh, splitting there in that, uh, well, you know, it was the, they won the Sunday thing. Just put the smack down. You Darvish pitched really, really well. Got the Cronenworth home run. That felt good in the premium discord. Didn't end up getting the attached uh, Matt Olson to go yard until game one there of Monday. But anyway, double header for San Diego. Now they head to Cincinnati here and Joe Musgrove. He's going to have to eat some innings more than likely here coming off of that doubleheader in three games. And, well, the evening deal, you Darvish did a good job helping them out. They did get a pretty good outing there also from Suarez, who ended up pitching deeper into that game in the game too. Helped them out a little bit, but Musgrove, 517 expected slugging, 389 XWOBA. Really, really bad stuff. As for Andrew Abbott, been really good, 269 XWOBA. Does have that 21.2 degree average launch angle. You're pitching in Great American Small Park. You better limit the hard contact. And so far, so good in that regard, 31.8% hard hit. So I want to focus at least on Cincinnati money line here because one, you're plus money with them. Two, San Diego's played three baseball games in less than like 48 hours. And then... Is this number three? Oh, yeah. Deli, Ellie De La Cruz. Nine homers on the season. Eight of them against lefties. Find that to be pretty... Or, sorry, against right-handed pitchers. As a left-handed batter, that is. I think he's a home run play that I definitely want to keep my eyes on against Joe Musgrove. Very fastball heavy. 11.3% barrel percentage. And Ellie De La Cruz smashing baseballs into the stratosphere. 92.8 mile per hour exit velocity average. That's really high. That's bright red on the sheet. Ellie De La Cruz to go yard. Yay. Take a look at that. Cincinnati money line. I think this is going to end up being a play for me. Curious to see. Curious to see what happens to this number closer to. Yeah, I'm probably going to add this to the card. Let's be serious. Always good to be paying attention to those things because I might explain something out here as I'm looking at it on my sheet and reevaluating things. But one of the main reasons that Cincy Moneyline did not go on the sheet ahead of this is that I, as I work through plays, I don't want to have like 15 plays on your card. Again, premium Discord, I'll add a number of different plays that get inserted that, you know, lines change throughout the day from night before until first pitch of these games. And you always want to be paying attention. This is like right on the cusp. And it's going to be a lean like, and generally speaking, that means that I've already bet it. This one I have not bet yet. And part of it is that I was thinking about this Cincinnati money line. Should have made these both lean likes and let you make the decisions. Again, it's your money. I want you to make good decisions with it. And I'm here to instruct you and help you. And hopefully you get the best available number. But we've got Logan Webb struggling. We got Martin Perez, who is just not very good in any way, shape, or form. And I think both of them, we've got 51% hard hit for Logan Webb, 46% for Martin Perez. Both of them. Uh, pretty awful in terms of strikeout stuff, right around 18.5%. Uh, you got Martin Perez, Southpaw here, going up against some righties. I mean, hell yeah, Ram Ramos now starting to bring some power to the table. I mean, yeah, he's going to start hitting some bombs here sooner rather than later. I'll throw that out there. 54% hard hit. Has that lower launch, but you get him outside of San Francisco. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a more advantageous park for home runs. I will be paying attention to that. Chapman as well. 410 expected slugging. Back to doing his normal stuff, but books love to just ramp up his prices, so it's pretty tough to get to. I think the over of eight, though, is a little bit advantageous. It is on a key number, and this goes more towards that 8.3 type number, but obviously a 4-4 tie, range of outcomes. Oh, it's so frustrating because I do want to bet this one, but I think I actually like the Cincinnati money line more as I'm running through this again here. Obviously, plus money attached to something, and San Diego, lots of baseball. Baseball players are used to playing a lot of baseball. It's not that. It's 162-game season, but has more to do with some of the relievers that exist there. Over eight. I'm going to call that a lean on my side because, again, I haven't bet it. But if you're looking for an extra play and you're like, Eric, do you like this? Do you like that? I think the over of eight just barely would make the cusp in terms of expected value, which we have a lot of that over at Odd Shopper. Let's talk about them now. $14.95 weekly, $49.95 monthly, friends, for everything at Odd Shopper, not just my premium betting card every single Monday through Friday. Also Sundays, dropped a nice little round robin parlay then ended up hitting for the people. Got the 2X, got the 3X. If you want to learn more about that, jump into that Discord. We're going to be firing up some videos, firing up a lot of stuff, talking you through that process. But the Discord Insider Access, that is where you can find me as well as some really, really sharp people who were all over it uh, on the Atlanta-San Diego series. I uh, was really impressed by some of the analysis some people were throwing in there. Some really sharp people. It's nice to have some sharp people joining that community and, and constantly evolving, constantly getting into EV betting, getting into the numbers and being 
very, very um, specific with why it is that they might like a play. I'm always impressed seeing that. If you want to jump in and be able to chat with some other sharp people, $14.95 weekly, and it gets a little bit better if you use promo code Lindy, 20% off expert picks, Discord, premium tools, all of that together. Again, the positive EV tools, the fantasy optimizer, all of that can be found at oddshopper.com. Come check it out. Water's warm. Sign up at the link down below in the video description box. 20% off using code Lindy. That's less than $2 a day for your first week. Really great opportunity to try it out. All righty, y'all. Back to the picks. Weather. Again, just seems to be the theme. It's humid. It's starting to ramp up. And now we're getting some wind blowing out. It's not that books aren't aware of that. But I do think that there are three home run props that I want to be paying attention to. And this is when you start to get some split data and you throw it in. And most pitchers, when you talk about having just normal splits, we're talking about a righty up against a lefty. They're not going to be as good. A lefty against a righty, not going to be as good. It is what it is. Hitters prefer to have the platoon split. Pitchers prefer to go against their same handedness. That's generally speaking. There are the reverse splits. We'll talk about them too. But John Gray, he is the pontification of somebody who is just simply a neutral pitcher. He has normal splits. We're looking at John Gray here for the Rangers, and I don't really want to deal too much with the Rangers Suarez. He's really, 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 really good so far this season. And yeah, you want to back him here at minus 155? Go ahead. I'm not going to. It's actually got a caution sign blinking, screaming at me. Maybe I'll reconsider that tomorrow, but again, uh, don't want to have a million plays. Want to have you get my best plays, know where the likes and the locks are, and be able to go from there. Get leans can turn into plays. It's just stuff I haven't bet yet, or I need the numbers to move, or like this, the props aren't out yet, but I use last 10 historical data. I then combine it with where I think the line's going to be against certain pitchers. And once you know, a John Gray against righties this season, 25% K rate, 126X ISO, really good stuff. But against lefties, a 160 expected ISO, only a 22.4% K rate. Hmm. Who are some lefties? Oh yeah, there's, well, there's technically going to be Bryson Stott out there too, but there are three that I really want you paying attention to here. Kyle Schwarber, obviously. Bryce Harper, obviously. And Brandon Marsh, 54.2% hard hit, 461 expected slugging with that 12 degree launch angle. I brought it up last year. I'm a little bit surprised that in 2023, he only had 12 home runs and 404 at-bats because with those kind of numbers, you'd expect it to be, can it get much higher? Whoa. I really want you paying attention to this. Uh, break even for Schwarber, plus 220. That's a wild number. Plus 260 for Bryce Harper and for Alec Marsh, plus 360. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of pinch hit risk. Although, for the most part, hasn't been there this season. Oh, that was adorable. I kind of got mind deaf because Alec Marsh is on the slate. Brandon Marsh on the slate. Good. We continue on our merry way. It doesn't matter. Brandon Marsh, he plays for the Phillies. Good talk. Glad we had it. Joe Ryan going up against Patrick Corbin in this spot. Uh, this is the disparity that there is. There's a righty in Joe Ryan. Been pitching really well. There's a lefty in Patrick Corbin. Been bad, uh, just pitching terrible for years. This contract is just down in the doldrums like worst in baseball kind of stuff 375 x well but 48.8 percent hard hit goes up against the twins team against lefties has just wrecked havoc all season long 109 wrc plus 149 iso isn't as high as you might expect that's for sure i like minnesota on the run line here i think it's just fine i know that you do get that ninth inning bump here for washington where you know obviously you back them on the run line they're gonna bat in the ninth you're hoping you're getting across the finish line there. But I do think Joe Ryan, 269 Expo, but next to anything Patrick Corbin offers, which is not a whole hell of a lot. I know that Washington put up infinity runs. Glad we didn't bet that spot. That would have been painful. After all, I did have Washington plus one and that, but we don't care about that. That was the, it was a lean. It wasn't an official play. It is what it is. Cooper Chriswell going up against Zach Littell here in Tampa Bay. Uh, Taj Bradley. Struck out like eight of the first nine, and then Boston just went nutty. Rafael Devers has homered in six straight ball games. Wild stuff. Wild small sample size stuff. But we'll say the under of eight. This is just freaking out a little bit. If you want to fire up Rafael Devers with the entire public, sir, I'm sure that's going to take public money for the second, third straight day and enjoy. But I won't be there, unfortunately, because I, I love my guy, Rafael Devers. I just haven't found any advantageous numbers on him so far this season. Cooper Criswell, 297 x but 231 expected batting average. Good for him. Zach Littell, 33.1% hard hit, 292 x but does have that 16.7 uh, degree average launch angle. So Devers, maybe primed up launch. I don't know. It's just an under eight lean. You know how much I hate to bet eights, especially when they're juiced minus 115. Ew, yuck. Ew. Oh, no. No, no, no. 
This is not going to be a fun spot. This this game is just it's death, destruction, pain, suffering. Let's talk a K ladder. I swear, Framber Valdez hates me. He absolutely hates me. Only two strikeouts here through 61 pitches. I would like to see more, more strikeouts. That would be good because we K-laddered him. We K-laddered him. But it's weird because Brian Woo, 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 Brian Woo is not who we're going to end up K-laddering here in this spot. It's actually going to be Clark Schmidt, which is a little surprising, but it's not all that surprising when it's Seattle on the other side. First Woo, really good stuff so far this season. Only 25 batted ball events, but 189 expected batting average. We'll say the K stuff. Not as good as last year, 25.1%. Uh, you know, he's all 23 years of age. He's a young kid, but 24 now. 22.9% K rate. Went through a lot of his metrics. The velocity's down half a mile per hour. I don't think that that's shocking considering he just got back off the IL. So here's what it is. Whatever. Clark Schmidt, 33.3% hard hit, 235 expected batting average. But you put his 27% K rate next to Seattle with the league high 28.8% K rate. Hard for me not to like what I'm looking at. So we are, oh my God. 4-2. Come on, Seattle. Put a ball in play. Two on now. Oh, this got into a sweat again. And you wonder if I bet my own plays. I've been staring at this in the corner the entire time. Please give me this over. Mitch Haniger against Holmes. I can't believe Holmes has given up two hits. I stopped looking at the game for a second. It just popped up in the corner. Four, three, four, three. Can we get one more? <laughs> no way. Against Clay Holmes? Clay Holmes had like a 0.4 ERA. What? What? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, the play is Clark Schmidt, uh, the six to eight Ks here. We're, we're literally talking about this game as this is happening. Four, three Yankees, top of the ninth, guy on first, guy on third. Oh my Lord. Oh, Dylan Moore, be the hero. Get in, score, score. No, it's Mitch Haniger at the plate. Is that who it is? Hang on. So yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, nope, it's Dylan Moore up. He's six hole. There we go. Hanniger just knocked in the guy. All right, 4-3. We're sweating. We are sweating. All right, let's go to the next game. We are still sweating, sweating big time here. Anyway, I'm going to talk through this one as fast as humanly possible. Some people might call me crazy. Uh, it might be. Two southpaws that are striking out a billion people here. Garrett Crochet, Yusai Kikuchi. It's not that I don't like Kikuchi in this spot. It's not that at all. We backed him a bunch this season. 42.4% hard hit, though. A lot higher than Garrett Crochet's 36.3%. Obviously, Crochet pitches for the White Sox. But I found a market that I kind of like, and I definitely, definitely, definitely want you adding to your portfolio for this spot for today. First five over on FanDuel or on DraftKings is pretty identical numbers here. We're talking plus 130, plus 140, just about anywhere you look. To back the White Sox for the first five money line. I think a lot of times you're looking at like 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, zero, zero, a lot of that. But it's hard not to like what you've seen from Crochet this season. 239 X Woba, that's really good. So is Kikuchi's 267 X Woba. This is obviously a tough spot pitching in Toronto, but first five, I'm willing to take a small play on this. I think it's the only way that I really want to back the White Sox in this spot. Really don't want to deal with the bullpen. Really, really, really don't want to deal with any other weirdness here in this spot. Oh my God, it is a 2-2 count. Play Holmes. Please give up Dylan Moore a hit. Please, please. 2-3 count. Okay. Next game. We've got wind blowing out in Wrigley Field. You know what that means. Hello, total 20 mile an hour wind. We'll say there's a little bit of precipitation. I don't think it's going to affect this spot, but at least be looking out, friends. At least be looking out. He walked them. Bases are now juiced with Mariners. A ball in play? Actually, no, because obviously there's one out. Dominic Canzone, who homered earlier in this game at the plate. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Anyway, I'm leaning over 10 and a half because this is just... It's not that Javier Assad's bad, because he's not. Charlie Morton's been good forever. He's not bad. There's a reason there's a 10 and a half total. When you get wind blowing out in Wrigley Field, this is the closest we get to like the Mexico City event, to Coors Field with, you know, heat. It, we're talking the smallest type ballpark with tons of home run opportunities. And Javier Assad, 14.3 degree average launch angle against one of the best offenses in baseball, if not the best offense in baseball. Them Dodgers 1-2. Yankees been up there here as well. So... 
be looking out, but 10 and a half, I know it's even money right now. It might move. I don't think that that's going to be something I'm invested in. We'll, we'll look at props, but you're going to get some really short odds on guys. I can't wait to see Christopher Morrell plus 160 to Homer, some garbage like that. And we've got the weirdest home run play of the season. So if you go back to last year, one of my favorite moments, obviously everybody's like, Eric, you're finding home runs from nowhere. Nelson Velasquez was a dog. Now this season, I don't think I've bet him one time. Not one time. 276 x Woba, 356 expected slugging. Allow the sample size to accumulate. You move on with your life. It is 4-4. We got the cover! Woo! Catch that lock, baby. Woo! How you like them apples? <laughs> Timberwolves, baby. They started a trend. It's all roses, baby. It's all roses. 4-4. Four, four, cash that lock. Daddy is back. Can't get a fucking strikeout from Framber Valdez, fellow. Three strikeouts. Oh, good. He gave up more runs. Good for you. Can you strike out Taylor Ward at least? That would be useful. Can you get to four? Can you get to six strikeouts for me? Anyway, we're not going to complain too much here. We are going to look at Kyle Isbell. Did you hear me saying that? No, he's batting ninth here for the Kansas City Royals, but his numbers have been sneaking up. And I think we might want to take a look. Kyle Isbell, 422 expected slugging, 40.6% hard hit, has the platoon split here going up against Casey Mize. Who has a 45% hard hit. I don't like him. I know he was a number one pick. They have screwed up two number one picks. Casey Mize, Spencer Torkelson. Haven't worked out. Not that you got to blame them, obviously. They were pretty highly touted as is. I think most people take them number one in those spots. But it still sucks for them to have missed on it. And I think Kyle Isbell batting ninth might be getting like plus 700. And this is yet another win straight out, wind blowing out, fire inferno afternoon. Actually, it's only like 84. 82 degrees at first pitch, but Kyle is built a home run if it's going to be better than plus 600. Did you see that coming? I didn't. I thought it would be sweet blenders, but no, we're feeling all kinds of funky. Clay Holmes, you're my favorite pitcher. Seattle's up 5-4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about it. Yeah. Friends, first bet safety net up to $1,500. If you sign up at the link below, if you enjoy this program, if you enjoy sweating your bets with me, jump in that premium Discord at Odd Shopper, but Something you can do on your own here. Signing up at BetMGM, signing up for every sports book you possibly can. And when they're giving you offers like $1,500 in bonus bets, if your first bet loses, take advantage. That's right. If you sign up at the link below, bet anything you want. $25, bucks, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 1000 bucks, $1,500. Doesn't matter what it is, what your unit size is. You have an opportunity to get that back in bonus bets if your first bet you make loses. Take a big swing. And if you miss, well, you get it back and you get to take another swing. It's multiple opportunities to make a big number over at BetMGM and really bolster and bank that bank. That was a lot of B words. Build your bankroll. There we go. That's what we're going for at BetMGM. Only if you're 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. Oh boy, I really, 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 really wanted that Seattle, New York over and we got it in the most ridiculous of fashions. Can't wait to jump in the premium discord after we get off of this because I'm happy. I haven't been happy with baseball in a while, but I'm pretty happy in this spot to be getting minus 140 on Kyle Bradish against Lance Lynn. Now, did we back Lance Lynn and everybody wanted to give me shit against the Angels and it is what it is. I think the Angels are just a team that I haven't figured out yet where Taylor Ward and Joe Adele, I think, have been really, really good. Cole Tucker's at least been functional since getting called up. Willie Calhoun, 487 expected slugging, good stuff from them. But one team that I know to be good, that you know to be good, that we all know to be good, is the Baltimore Orioles. Now, they're on the road in Seattle, or in Seattle, in St. Louis here, taking on Lance Lennon Company. And a team that the jury is still very much out on is this St. Louis group. Now, as the year progresses, as we get into this summer weather with the humidity and things of that nature, we're looking at a very advantageous spot to, to really back St. Louis at some plus numbers. This is the opposite of that. Kyle Bradish is good. 35 batted ball events so far this season. 2.42 expected ERA, 20% hard hit, 27.9% K rate. 
gets the opportunity to neutralize the Goldies, to neutralize the Arenados. You look at some of these numbers for St. Louis, they have been the opposite of impressive so far to start off the season, especially against righties. Now, they've been okay, I guess, 104 WRC+, plus, but a 23.8% K rate, 134 ISO. Those numbers, those last two, are certainly not it. As for Lance Lynn, we know that he can give a power to absolutely anybody on any given day. That is kind of his MO. I brought that up in the, uh, you know, we're back from it plus money. But as you look here at this spot, I cannot tell you how great it is to be a Baltimore bat. It is a great, great day to be a Baltimore bat. Overall this season, a 186 ISO against righties. As the second highest mark between the Yankees and Dodgers. It is good in statistical hitting categories to be between the Yankees and the Dodgers. They also strike out at just a 20.7% clip. So Lance Lynn, really enjoy your time here in the humidity of St. Louis here at 80 degrees first pitch. And Kyle Bradish, friends, we're going to back him with that 2.9% barrel percent next to uh, Lance Lynn's 10.2% barrel percentage. Yeah, minus 140 is not indicative of what this number should be. It's going to be anything up to minus 160 for me, as it will be for you. Baltimore Moneyline, my favorite play on the day for Tuesday. Let's hit another lock. Another lock? <laughs> Who'd have thunk it, friends? Not you. Not me. <laughs> Streak of two? That'd be good. Three games to go. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. We have Griffin Canning, Christian Javier. Christian Javier had one good outing, and all of a sudden we're looking at like minus 200 on the individual. Fascinating. Fascinating. Now, brought it up before i have no idea what to make of this freaking angel angels team I, without mike trout i thought it would fall off a planet but ward adele i mean i had it all queued up when we were talking about it before logan hop and one of the better catching uh, catching options period and willie calhoun starting to show out why once upon a time he was one of those highly touted prospects way 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 long ago oh sometimes it takes nine years ten years to figure your shit out not that I would know anything about that. I'm still hanging here, betting sports every day. Houston, minus one and a half on the lean section. Again, I'm not going to be betting this because, again, plus 105. I know it's 100 cent disparity. Eight and a half is what it is. Angels are just freaking me out here. I don't have to bet everything. I can just accumulate data. We come off of Colorado going sweep, sweep, and then they get sweep by San Francisco. And now we're getting them at plus 112, uh, plus 114. Best line I'm looking at now. Cal Quantrill. That's pretty interesting. And every time I kept reading A. Brooks, I thought Armani Brooks. What? Remember the twins? Is anybody? NBA season? Producer Jacob. You got to know. Mr. Brooks. No? Quack, quack. Ducks? No? Hell. This bitch is... Boom, boom, Mm. Moin, moin, moin. Oh, Pac-Man too. Cal Quantrill's not good. 16.7% barrel percentage, 257 expected batting average, 41.4% hard hit, all of those things. As for Aaron Brooks, oh, 352 expected slugging, 312 X12. And now my, all my friends are texting me about the over. <laughs> they all turned it off. They all are giving me shit. The group thread is fire now. Oh, I really hate this job sometimes. It's okay. Anyway, Colorado Moneyline, it's on the books, friends. Uh, Aaron Brooks, 352 expected selling in just a 17.9% K rate. He's 34. 34, didn't pitch in the bigs last season. That's not ideal. I don't think he's very good. I'll just take Colorado. Let me flip coins for plus 114 all day. And the Dodgers and Arizona and Brandon Fat versus G uh, Gavin Stone and Mr. Kevin Stone, give it up. No hard contact. It's kind of weird. Thought that would kind of be a problem for him at the big league level, but it's basically the opposite of what I thought. Not giving up hard contact, 31.2%, but giving up contact, period, 264 expected batting average, just a 15.8% K rate. So, Brandon Fat, I really want to back you here at plus one and a half. I really, really do, but it's now gotten juiced up to minus 140. Ugh, I really do. I don't trust the Dodgers lineup to not go nuts against anybody. And backing them, backing a team, getting a run and a half, sometimes ain't enough here. 282 X Woba, really good stuff. 372 expected slugging, great stuff. 22.8% K rate, decent enough stuff. I like Brandon Fat. 
I wish I could back him. Maybe a small play on the money line if you absolutely have to have it, but I'm not seeing it as plus EV thing. And this is on the cusp of it. This is like 0% EV. Arizona plus one and a half. Best available play I have from this one right now. Pay attention to props. We'll take a look tomorrow, but let's get that Baltimore money line locked across. That would make me very, very and that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. So you know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board here for Tuesday's slate. Good to get Friday. Well, no, Thursday lock. Didn't have a lock on Friday. Got the Monday lock through in exciting fashion for me. There's no way that that looked good. It looked phenomenal after the first inning. It looked terrible for the next eight. And Clay Holmes, you are now my hero for, well, giving up runs. Thank you. Anywho. Thank you, Producer Jacob. It's a great time to be alive. Let's hammer out some dollars on Tuesday. That would be great. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Tuesday. Let's go!